Hello and welcome to another part of our Presto Summit series where we're taking our video series about all sorts of use cases of Presto SQL all across the globe in virtual events. Today we have the honor to be joined by Pu Cheng and Yi from the Pinterest team uh, who is going to talk uh, uh, to us more about Presto uh, used in the analytics platform at Pinterest. Myself, my name is Manfred Moser. I work as a community advocate and engineer and writer and stuff at Starburst, um, closely involved with the Presto SQL project, obviously. And today I'm just going to be in the background paying attention to all the questions you have. So we very much encourage you to ask questions online in the feature of GoToMeeting where you can ask questions. I will keep an eye on them. Um, and monitor them. I'll interject now and then potentially if it's possible. Otherwise, we'll have a dedicated Q&A session in the, in the end. Um, also related to that, please um, always keep in mind, if you have further questions, you can find us on Slack or on the PrestoSQL.io website uh, slash Slack. Um, with that, I think it's going to be super amazing to see what Pucheng and Yi are doing uh, with Presto at Pinterest. So I'll hand it over to them. and. Look forward to hear and learn a lot more to do with everyone else today. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Pu Chen. Uh, uh, today, we are uh, me and my co my coworker Yi and I will present you uh, Presto, how we use Pre uh, Presto at Pinterest. So before we start, a uh, little bit of introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Pu Chen Yang. I joined Pinterest for about uh, more than two years. So before that, I I, I was a student. Uh, I, I go to grad school in the in the university uh, in the in here, and then uh, currently I'm working on the big data create platform team. So our team majorly work on all the create systems, including um, Spark, Hive, Spark SQL, Hive, and uh, Presto. We also work on the Hive underscore and the file format as well. So my co uh, next, I will introduce. Uh, I will let my coworker E to uh, introduce a bit about her, uh, himself. Uh, hi, uh, my name is E. Uh, I've been working with uh, Pinterest for eight months, and uh, before that, I uh, was working in Facebook with uh, Martin Bay and David on uh, Presto. Uh, yeah, so just basically. So let me hand back the presentation uh, to put him. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you will join us in the Q&A section, so please uh, uh, send, out, send us the, your question if you have any. So today, here's the agenda we are going to talk about today. Uh, first, we will go over very briefly about how we use Presto and Pinterest, some uh, briefly introduction and some technical ch challenges that we have seen. Uh, we, will, uh, we will raise some uh, examples there. We will not like cover all of them because of the limit of time. And the next, we will dive into uh, we, how we use the Presto warning systems to uh, help users to write better queries. Also, we will uh, introduce you how we manage uh, the uh, introduce you how we manage diverse workloads. At the at the closing part, we will uh, talk more about the future of our work. So let's go over about the overview of uh, Presto at Pinterest. So before that, uh, we would like to share the like how much data scale we have at Pinterest right now. So Pinterest, uh, as you might already know, so Pinterest have already have 400 million uh, monthly active users, and then Pinterest like this consists of like lots of pins and boards. We have roughly about 200 billion pins, four billion boards. So we have uh, every, so right now all our infrastructure is, is running on AWS right now. We have about like 400 petabytes of data on S3, and then we have about uh, 80,000 Hadoop jobs. We have like 11, uh, 11 110,000 hype tables. So this is basically, uh, this is roughly our, uh, uh, this is roughly our like data scale. So the next slide shows you how we evolved from uh, early 2014 till now. So basically what we are at the early stage is we uh, mainly use the third party, uh, third party vendors of services, including Kubo and Redshift. And then 
along the way, we trying to develop our in-house uh, platform, including uh, Presto, Hadoop, Spark as well. And in 2020, we have uh, Hadoop, Presto, and Spark, Hive, Hyperman Store, Spark, SQL, and Flink. So Presto right now is mainly use our uh, ad hoc interactive query systems. And for offline uh, query processing, we mainly use Spark SQL, and we are in the migration from Hive to Spark SQL at the moment. So after introducing you some like uh, rough data, uh, our data scale at Pinterest, let's go more on the Presto at Pinterest. So all our customers is uh, coming from internal users. They are uh, they are consist of non uh, engineers or non engineers. So we have a roughly about one uh, one fourteen hundred monthly active users that run Presto in our platform. And then in terms of number monthly queries, we have roughly about one million query that like run on our platform. So as you can see that uh, we have a very steady growth from the early 2018. Uh, so you can see that uh, Presto is becoming a more and more popular interactive query engine at, at the company at, at this moment. So after introducing you the usage, let's talk more about uh, the Presto architecture that we have at Pinterest. So as you can see that uh, for the from the uh, top to the bottom, it is we are going uh, via the front end to the back end. So in the front end, as you can see, we have different uh, Presto uh, front end clients such as ta uh, Tableau, Jupyter, and then we have other internal tools called Data Hub. And then in the middle, all the queries will ascend to a uh, single entry point, which we call a Presto Gateway. Uh, we will talk about more about that later. So basically, Presto Gateway is an uh, intelligent routing layer that routes the, the queries to different clusters. And in the middle, you can see that we have we hosted different Presto clusters. Uh, you guys are, might already be familiar with that. Uh, we run Presto, uh, we run some Presto workers on uh, Kubernetes pod, while some are non uh, easy to dedicate instance. And then on the storage level, we are our data is mainly uh, on S S three as we mentioned before. We mainly use Hive connector, and uh, we also support uh, MySQL connector, Joey connector, uh, and Thrift services as well. On the right side, you can see we have Presto controller, which is uh, we will talk more about that later. Which is also a critical pieces we develop uh, at Pinterest. It is used for uh, deployment, monitoring, uh, self healing, cluster self healing. Uh, and the health check as well. And we use the uh, stats for and uh, to monitor all the stats. On the left side, you can see we are using Hyman Store, and also we use the MySQL database for Presto Gateway to process the data. So after talking about the architecture uh, we have, uh, let's go. Uh, let's briefly go review uh, overview the cluster configurations. So we basically run, uh, we currently run Presto SQL uh, 320 in our in our older all the clusters. Uh, we have some backports, uh, backports and some customized changes. And we are we are currently we support Hive, MySQL, Joy, and Thread Connector. The majority use case is coming from uh, is coming from Hive. We have ad hoc workers running on Kubernetes pod to leverage the the fast auto scale and then fast uh, service uh, restart as up, upstart uh, benefit bring by, brought by Kubernetes. So also you can see that uh, here's a, a chart that indicates a cluster configuration. We have three clusters mainly in use. We have two clusters for hub usage, one cluster for schedule use, uh, use case. We also have other like uh, other small clusters for different uh, type of use case such as like PII other like some uh, very few, uh, very small team dedicated clusters. Next, we'll talk about the uh, Presto controller. So as we mentioned before, Presto controller is a uh, critical pieces that are uh, for monitoring and uh, self healing and uh, deployment. So uh, it is a Python based service. And then uh, here's the ma major functionality that are uh, provided by the controller. 
we do health check, such as, uh, for example, we send a canyon query to the Presto clusters every minute to de decide whether this is healthy or not healthy. We also do some uh, slow worker detection by checking the worker status, such as the CPU usage, uh, open file descriptors, so on and so forth, to decide whether a worker is slow or not. Also, we also check whether a worker has uh, have yelled too many uh, internal errors, such as like um, the worker is not responded. We also do heavy query detection by uh, by the CPU consumption. For example, we will queue some uh, severe CPU intensive query or, or query that like scan too many uh, file splits. We also do uh, rolling restart for press of clusters. Uh, so we do we do daily restart for Presto clusters, uh, and then uh, the Presto controller will initiate some, uh, we initiate a shutdown signal to the Presto clusters. And then the, the press, once the Presto cluster restarted and then loaded all the up-to-date, uh, the three definition jar, schema jar, and then we will uh, re -enable, we will uh, mark this cluster as healthy again. And then at the same time, we will uh, enable this cluster on the Presto gateway, which we talk about later. And then send the traffic start sending back the traffic to the Presto clusters. Also, Presto controller we also do the uh, auto scale of the clusters by calling the Kubernetes API and then uh, scaling up and down the paths and then bring up the workers as needed. The next piece we'll talk about Presto gateway. So uh, in the previous slide we in the, we showed that Presto gateway is uh, an intelligent proxy layer that sits between the client. For example, Jupyter Tabular uh, between clients and uh, Presto clusters. So the Presto gateway we are running is a forked version by forked uh, software by uh, open source by Lyft. And then you can check it their webs uh, the the Git uh, project on the on the GitHub. And then it essentially is a smart HTTP proxy layer. And then we we spend effort to make the Presto gateway to stateless, which means that it is it will be very easy to scale according to our needs. We also make the Presto gateway uh, very, uh, make clients agnostic of uh, specific Presto clusters. And we have provided 14 future features. So one, we routed the Presto queries to, uh, via the gateway to different clusters based on different rules. For example, rules on the source view, on the HTTP header, on the, some query uh, uh, characteristics. Also, we will, um, we will route the queries based on the health. For example, if uh, we have a cluster behind a gateway that's not healthy, we will definitely not route that query to the that query to this unhealthy clusters. We are also routing the query by load, which means that we are we are periodically check the number of concurrent running query on different clusters, and then we can decide in which one which cluster is uh, relatively uh, is relatively uh, underutilized and then we can send the credit over to that underutilized clusters. The second thing is we are providing some resource use usage visibility for user organization. For most of the time a user uh, will uh, come complain us why their query is running slow or why their queries are queued, queued up. In that case we will provide such a centralized places for user to see uh, what uh, the resource usage for themselves or for the organization they are in. The third thing is the overall Presto cluster help with visibility. This is to provide a self-service for the user to uh, diagnose whether a query runs low is because the cluster is unhealthy or just because the, the user have uh, written some like uh, back, back queries. In the next slide, in this slide, you will see that this is a, a screenshot that uh, we are of the Presto Gateway UI. Uh, this is the UI that we are running at, pro at production right now. So as you can see on the on the uh, on the top on the top uh, level, it is you can see that we have different clusters, and then we have a status for different clusters, such as its usage, uh, memory, number of queries, uh, number of workers, whether it's healthy or not. So some of the information are already like like uh, we get it from directly from the Presto uh, cluster UI. In the bottom, you can see we have exposed the use resource usage uh, for different resource group. 
And then uh, we in each resource group, we also uh, link the queries that run within this uh, resource group and then uh, and their uh, resource usage as well. So after we talk about the uh, talk about the Presto gateway, so we have to, uh, sorry we have talked about Presto gateway, pre uh, Presto controller, uh, Presto clusters, and then here uh, and here are all the uh, the general overview for the for the Presto like over clusters overview. So here I would like to talk more about like the challenge we have at Pinterest. So one challenge we, we are seeing is we have seen 50 nested large grid schemas. So this is the, we previously identified is the major reason for the cluster to be stuck or even crashes because of out of memory. Uh, to, to give you an example, we have a very popular like used thrift schema that has like more than 12 million primitives in that. And it has a depth of like 41 levels. And also when this schema is serialized to screen, it takes over like 282 megabytes. So when all this adds together, the coordinator is very easy to run it out of memory. And then by our statistics, we have close up to uh, 500 hype tables over 100,000 primitives in their schemas. And then usually this is because the coordinator fetches table schema from high store and then serialize the, that schema in each task request and send it over to workers. So in that case, it, that really makes a huge problem. So what we do here is we, we are trying to not load the schema, uh, not translate from the schema class to the, to the screen on the coordinator itself. Instead, we have deployed uh, the schema jar to every node, including coordinator and worker. And we only passing the thrift class name uh, from the coordinator to workers in the request. And then we deserialize them to the, to the, the actual screen on the different, uh, during the, on, on the workers and on the node, uh, on the coordinator, instead of like passing it to the, on the HTTP request. The next challenge we have is we have inconsistent security and schema jar versions between coordinators and worker. To give you a little bit background of that, so we have deployed some 30 jars uh, that was developed uh, developed by our internal customers, including 30 jars, schema jars as well. So whenever Presto cluster Presto processes resulted, it will pull the latest 30 and schema jars on S3, and then there very often uh, sometimes when we uh, our Presto controller thought that this worker might be a bad uh, we start a worker and the worker when you restart will pull the latest jar which will make the, the schema or the jar uh, out of sync with the coordinator to solve that what we are doing is we we, we give a ver we label a version to the jars that we are publishing to s3 and then we include a version number in the node info and then we broadcast the coordinator node version, node info to all workers. So whenever the, uh, whenever the worker uh, received the node info from the coordinator and identified the version is mismatch, the worker will auto re restart automatically. And then once it restarted, it will pull the, the right version of Java S3. So in, in that case, we can make, always make the coordinator and workers uh, Java version in sync. Next, we are going to talk more about uh, the warning system for uh, writing, for helping users to write better query and diagnosing. This is uh, this is part of the project we are working on called Dr. Presto. It is like we got the idea from Dr. Elephant, which you might already know. So the, this project is the intent of this project is to help users to write uh, better queries, and then uh, when user writing a query. I'm running a query. We want to expose as much as information that how can user identify how well his or her query is running, or what should he or her improve. It. She improve uh, when 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 the developer is trying to uh, rewrite the queries. To do that, we are leveraging the the warning system that Presto already provided. Um, we use warning system. Uh, we develop uh, we on, on top of the, uh, the existing warning system we have developed a kind a, a set of warnings to uh, deliver to user 
to uh, to give users our uh, recommendation. So we have two big category. One is called query authoring, it helps users to better author their queries. And the second one is called query diagnostic. It will help users to identify or know why their queries spend uh, lots of time or why their query runs slow. Uh, to give you more examples, for query authoring, or we warn the user or we give tips to users whether they uh, when they, they are okay to use a proxy distinct to replace uh, the count distinct, which is like more uh, more faster, but also can give you approximate results. Also, we will also warn user to not select a very large result set to the front end. This is a limitation that in, uh, uh, we have in, within the Pinterest because we we identify the, the front end client cannot pull like too much data. Otherwise, the query will stop there forever. We also have uh, we also warn user if they are trying to is missing partition predicate in their uh, queries. The, the idea is that lots of our Presto users are probably not uh, engineers. They they might probably not that familiar with like the Presto how Presto work or how SQL query will how big data analysis work. So usually they will have very simple select so start from a very giant table and then run there forever. So this is one to help users to, to uh, remind them if they can do better by adding a predicate in there. We also have a query diagnostic for the users. For example, we have we uh, remind users that they have spent uh, their query have spent too uh, too much CPU already. Uh, probably they should uh, set the set the query uh, make the query in another uh, proper resource group. And then we also uh, tell user what table they are scanning a non-column table. As we all know, uh, Presto is very uh, column table is pretty friendly to Presto, but but uh, not other uh, vice versa. So we also warn user on the wrong join type, and then we will also uh, give user more about performance analysis in the future. So as you can see, the screenshot that I in the slides. So this is a screenshot that we uh, the, the front the user when they're using a front end client will actually see. So when the query is, keep, is running, we will display the warning. Here you can see two warnings in the in the in the slides. So to tell user what is good, what is not good, especially for what was not good, what could be improved. We have included all the tips and then all the all the recommendation that we have for this query. So that user can better to leverage them in their development. The next topic we are going to share is about managing diverse workloads. So when we say diverse, what what uh, we I want to share what we actually like facing we are facing here. So one dimension we are facing is the tra uh, from time variance uh, traffic variance between the business hour and non business hours. So as you can see in this chart, uh, this is the number of running queries uh, in a single day. And then we have the red line represent the schedule use case and the green line represent the ad hoc use case. So as you can see, the, the, the ad hoc use case is pretty aligned with the, the business, our normal the human natural use case, which means that we are uh, really relatively high traffic during the day, but very low traffic during the night. And for the schedule use case, you can see at every uh, every six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock at this point, there's a large, huge amount of query uh, to be scheduled on these clusters. That was coming from actually that's coming from the tabular uh, query uh, tabular uh, reports. So we have seen this traffic variance between uh, business hours and non-business hours. And then we are trying to sort of find a way to um, to leverage this usage, leverage the underutilized resources during the off-peak hours, so that we can make average query runtime lower. The second uh, for solution we will talk about that later. And speaking of and, and coming back, the the second dim dimension we want to uh, put it here is we have very very various uh, resource usage. Uh, requirements. So what we have previously, uh, we have resource limit on per user on per client, and then we allow them to submit three queries for different uh, per user and per client, and we don't have imposed a CPU quota. But it doesn't work out. It, 
it kind of worked out in the old, old, old days, but doesn't work out right now. The reason is because we have very various uh, query type. Some of them are very resource intensive, while some is very like weighted. And also due to the natural of the effort usage, this change, the computer demand changes pretty quickly. It might increase, the demand might be very high during the day, but might be very low during the night. So how we are going to solve that? So for the, for the first dimension, the query traffic variance, we planned, we are, we are trying to route the traffic between ad hoc and scheduled clusters. So we, the ad hoc and scheduled cluster are intended for different use case, but we realize that sometimes we can make this boundary a little bit vague, and then we can break the boundary if possible when one cluster is underutilized. For example, we usually will route the schedule queries to our cluster during the night because that was the time that like not too many users are uh, running Presto queries. Also, in order to uh, direct user to um, to leverage our clusters better, we we are trying to publish the traffic pattern as you can see in the, in the previous slide in here. Uh, we are trying to publish a traffic pattern to the users so that users, when users are trying to schedule a presto query to run to the clusters, they can always know when will be the best time or, or the time that uh, they can likely to get more resources so that they can meet their SLA of their queries. For the second dimension, for, uh, we try to improve the resource usage and uh, include, in, improve the developer velocity. The solution we have is we are we are launching a project to promote the ARC-based resource group setting configuration to all Presto clusters. So basically, we want to we don't want to limit the user to running a query per user per client. Instead, we want to limit the use. We want to set the resource constraint on the whole, whole organized organization level. So by organization, it means that it's based on the LDAP of the users. Uh, for example. Uh, the users in different in the same team can share same resource group, and then this organization, the size of the organization organization could vary from 20 to 100. And then by uh, historical analytics, we have found out that uh, the 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 best number that we can allow users to run concurrently is 32. Also, we provide a visibility for user and, uh, and and for which user and query is taking the majority of the resources in the group, uh, which are, which is also uh, displayed on the Presto gateway, which we'll show you later. And also, in each resource group, to uh, to solve the problem of different uh, various type of queries, some might be intensive, resource intensive, some might be not. So we have developed different subgroups to allocate different resources. Uh, we have three subgroups here. One is called fast lane, normal, and expensive. So this uh, three resource group have different quotas and then are with different configurations. So we also make users uh, able to configure which resource group they want to go into, what they create want to go into uh, by setting the section property. So as you can see the next slide, uh, it is uh, a, a screenshot that uh, on the Presto Gateway uh, UI that you, you, you already seen before. But we want to dive a little bit more about this resource group panel. So you can see that we have uh, divided our resource group into different organizations such as media, growth, engineering, product analytics, research, and some uh, service account. And then in different resource group, we can also see the number of running query, what's the limit, uh, what's the CPU time they are consuming, and then and for each query, we also expose the same. How long does it run? How how much CPU time they spend? What's the progress of it? And then in each query link, we have linked it to the actual Presto uh, query UI. So I guess that's pretty much it. So uh, in future work, so here's uh, a list of the future work that we are going to work on. So first, we're working. We are planning to work on evaluating spot instance. So this is for better cost savings and a better resource utilization. Because due to the natural Presto query, we run ad hoc, mostly run ad hoc, and then most of the query our P90 runtime is pretty low within a minutes or two minutes. So 
we found that it will be very beneficial for us to leverage the spot instance to uh, improve the resource utilization and also cut down the cost. We have more press warnings, uh, such as the, the query diagnosis we mentioned before. Uh, for the security perspective, we are working, we're trying to work on the fine grain access control so that we don't have to have different uh, clusters for different data such as PII or non-PII or SOX data. We just have one single cluster for all use cases. This will help us to uh, better do better uh, resource utilization and then we'll uh, cut down the maintenance cost. And as you can see in the previous slide uh, for the Presto Gateway, we are going to develop more for better pre, uh, failure diagnostics. So right now, even though Presto UI have like very good, uh, very good uh, UI already, uh, like expose lots of very detailed information right now. But for the majority of our engineers who might not familiar writing as SQL, it might be a little bit hard for them to digest or to educate them how should they write better. So we are going to like have better diagnostics for these failures. Also, right now at Pinterest, we doesn't uh, we have very few use case for Presto on ETL such as the Jupyter uh, notebook and the tabular reports, those are very ske a scheduled job, but they are only limited to uh, one hours. So we're going to evaluate the uh, Presto on ETL workloads in the futures to explore possibility to, uh, to make Presto available in our workflow systems. So I guess that's pretty much it. So uh, we, uh, I have linked uh, Presto uh, at Pinterest engineering blog in the slide. Also, the our presentation on the New York Presto summit last year. So feel free to uh, look uh, if you can to see if you can find more uh, interesting topic that you might have. Yeah. So that's pretty much my part. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, we have a whole bunch of questions before we get there, though. Uh, also, recapturing for everyone, um, don't forget to get a free copy of the Presto the Definitive Guide that myself, Matt, and Martin wrote. You can get that from stubbersdata.com. Um, and uh, in our Presto training series that we started uh, uh, like about a month ago, we already had the advanced SQL uh, training with uh, David, who was uh, graciously presenting a whole bunch of things that uh, I'm sure lots of you haven't heard of before, like very in advanced qu query features and functions. That's been very successful. And then the second follow-up uh, training event with Martin was also great about tuning. Uh, next week, we'll have Dane on board, one, another one of the founders of Presto, who's going to talk to us about securing Presto. Lots of you running Presto in enterprises will definitely appreciate all the knowledge he's going to share. And then another one with Dane later in September, also about performance tuning, which, as you can see from uh, what uh, Yi and Pucheng uh, shared today, is very useful. Now, I'm going to see if there's a couple of questions. Um, we did have a couple of questions already from the audience. So one of the first questions that came up was from Brock. He was asked uh, asking um, how you use the auto scaling to scale down the Presto clusters and workers on demand, or if we do any of that. And related to that, I also had a question, actually, yeah, uh, in terms of, you were mentioning that you have these configuration files with the version jars and so on, and you said that the workers restart, but how do you restart them? Do you, like, if some workload is on them already, do you have some sort of detection where you restart them gracefully, get them out of a schedule, or what, what are you doing there? Yeah, uh, E, do you want to answer the question or I can answer the question? You might also want to sh uh, switch the webcam on alone so they're not all alone here. <laughs> yeah, I can I can answer the question. So uh, what I understand is there's a the question, there's two questions. One, the first question will be how we do auto scaling in general. The second question is how we uh, how we how we manage to make the coordinator uh, schema jar or 30 jar in sync. Uh, more details about that. So for the first question, uh, we we are majorly doing the time-based auto scaling at this moment. 
uh, the reason is we are uh, even though um, even though we are seeing the Kubernetes part has very uh, good uh, initiative, uh, uh, good benefits of doing auto scaling, but we have some uh, we have some cost savings that we are um, that the comp we have some cost saving models that provided by our infrastructure team. So basically, we found out that during the mid middle of day, we when we do auto scaling, it won't be it won't contribute any cost savings. So right now, what we are, what we mentioned to you, we found the most efficient way is we to doing the auto scaling within uh, of the peak hours. So so in that case, we can like at least cut down some cost for for the for the daytime ad hoc daytime uh, clusters. So the second question is how we are going to manage the the the, the jars in sync. So to to better answer the question, I will probably go back uh, go back to the previous slides so that uh, you can have a better idea to how we do that. So in so here's a uh, so once so here it is. So our presto process is managed by the by an upstart uh, service that are provided in the in the in on the machine. So in that case, uh, whenever there's a presto process dies. The upstart process will bring up a new process and Presto worker process in there. So when we bring up a Presto process, new Presto uh, process, the worker first will try to uh, try to uh, send a try to get a PHTP response from the from the coordinator to know what's the first job version number from the coordinator, so that the worker will know what job version number the coordinator is using. I think there should be a one API called slash viva slash info for the uh, coordinator so that the worker knows what's the job version that coordinator is using. In that case, the workers will just uh, pull that, uh, pull the S from S3 using that version prefix and then pull the, all the jars from there. So is that something you implemented? Yeah, I think that was something we developed in-house. Okay, so what like that's also related to a question. So you're using a custom version of Presto from Presto SQL, right? Like you were saying 320 and then some yeah. custom changes, backports and stuff like that. And then that's one of the customizations. Uh yes, that, that will be one customization. Uh and on top of that, we have some other customization, uh, customization uh, such as we have we implemented uh, a graceful shutdown for the coordinator. Because we know that currently coordinator uh, is not supported for graceful shutdown, but we have uh, implemented graceful shutdown for coordinator so that coordinator will exit its JVM process when no queries is running. This feature will be uh, will corroborate with the Presto gateway so that we can do the rolling restart. Also, we have some uh, we have customized some grid as uh, grid, uh Changes that are related uh, to the changes we talked about before. Yeah. So that custom that that graceful shutdown is something you potentially going to contribute to Presto SQL. I'm guessing. I think uh, right now we don't have plan for that, but we definitely can like talk with the team, uh, talk with the, the open source community for that later. Uh, yeah, I think we have. Uh, I think previously, uh, when my coworker present in the in other uh, in the also in the Presto summit, there there's some issues, but we didn't have a chance to uh, follow on that. I probably will like follow up with that if uh, the community is interested. We we are happy to contribute back. That's cool. Now related to open source, I also noticed obviously you were talking about the Presto gateway being used quite a lot. Um, yeah. I'm just guessing that's the one that Lyft open sourced, and you are using that one unmodified or also may maybe with modifications. Yes. We yes, we do actually made uh, tons of modification on that. Some actually are more Pinterest related, and but uh, like for example, the UI was changed, and uh, we have uh, much more uh, more changes on query routing, basically. Based on the uh, back, uh, load of the backend service, and based on the uh, based on how how the uh, query like uh, like uh, how how the how likely a query can be blocked in a certain resource group. So if so, certain like uh, if some user have uh, some query that can be uh, so they run a lot of query on one cluster, then we don't route them, and we just route to another cluster. 
Okay, cool. So, so you are also working with the open source uh, project from Lyft there, the Presto Gateway, a little bit, or mostly just have it forked, basically. Actually, oh. right now we are still uh, all those code are still in our code base. So, oh, okay, cool. definitely want to contribute back to the open source. Uh, I think one challenge we have is uh, we are not really huge team. So. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. I I don't know honestly how active the Lyft open source project around Presto Gateway is myself either. So, fair enough. That's cool. So uh, Martin also asked which were the deficits in Presto UI you see in order to build a whole new interface as the one presented with Presto Control and Gateway. So I, I'm thinking you already answered that pretty much. Um, the other one about the open source version was answered as well. Now I have another question, and you were saying. Um, that um, I think you at least mentioned that Jupyter notebooks are used as clients. So I just wanted to ask and understand a bit more what your different users are doing when they're running queries. You were talking a lot about setting session properties, um, giving custom advice for running queries. So what, what's the typical UI experience that your users are experiencing and how do you support them to run those queries and whatever else? Uh, you're talking about the warning, right? No, I'm just talking so, about, yeah, all like those warnings and also other, like what are your users doing? What's their experience? Uh, with uh, we are kind of uh, using this warning as a way to communicate, communicate back to our users about like anything, like, uh, but especially on the performance uh, tuning side. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically what we do is uh, we have, uh, so we have a certain warning on like specific uh, uh, performance issues and uh, we have a uh, warning on other areas as well. So basically this uh, relates back to our, our internal like uh, uh, data visualization frameworks. Like for, for example, the one show in the slides is uh, data, which is uh, actually an open source uh, 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 data visualization uh, uh, tool uh, we use in Pinterest. So basically, uh, it base, so basically, the UI just pick up the uh, warning from the from the uh, response of uh, Presto, then it just uh, oh, okay. shows in the panel. Uh, um, we also have like a kind of integration in the uh, Presto Gateway UI. Also, so basically, we can kind of highlight which queries have warnings and what warnings are there. So basically, when they look at there, basically they can easily uh, spot which queries they need to pay attention to and what uh, kind of tuning they need to do. So some of your users are actually also just using the Presto Gateway uh, UI straight then I'm guessing. Yes, uh, so actually another thing we plan to do is basically probably we can ha uh, have some like kind of a daily reports based on the, uh, on the warning. So one problem of having it on the UI is basically like especially for schedule job, nobody will go back to look at the logs and uh, <laughs> check the running. So uh, one thing we actually plan to do is to do a daily uh, report and uh, basically send out uh, emails to the those users to oh, yeah. say, hey, there is a problem, hey, maybe just take a look. Okay, you also mentioned that you're using Jupyter Notebooks. So are yes. those used for the scheduled execution? Uh, so basically, uh, so Jupyter Notebooks, we have ad hoc uh, use cases, basically when you try to write, uh, basically create a new uh, report, you would use it in an ad hoc way. And okay. then what is scheduled, basically is a scheduled job. every. So, so what is what is used to schedule the jobs? So, uh, actually, now we are migrating to uh, internal uh, uh, data, uh, uh, basically a uh, workflow system. Uh, so, basically, it schedules uh, 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 Jupyter reports on a certain okay. uh, schedule, basically. Okay. Cool. But, Sorry, I thought I lost you there. So yeah, so basically that's how, so we have our internal, like we have a few of our internal uh, workflow systems and uh, one of them is called Flowhub. Uh, not quite sure if it's open source yet, maybe it is. 
and uh, we also are kind of uh, converging uh, to use Airflow internally. Yeah, Airflow is quite commonly used for those kind of things, I'm yeah. sure. And there's other open source projects that can be used for workflow executions. Like I'm, I've been using Concord for quite a bit, and that's very useful to schedule and like run any sort of like custom defined workflows in in a YAML format. So that's that's various systems out there, I'm sure. Yeah. Very cool. So I'm not sure if there's any other questions here in the QA board. I don't see any more. I think we got all of those answered. As I mentioned earlier on as well, we will share the recording of this video and um, the slide deck hopefully as well on prestosql.io slash blog and also on the um, Pinterest page probably somewhere. And I think that's it. Is there any other questions from anyone? We'll give it a last well around or anything else you wanted to mention, Guy? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think we've uh, fortunately already mentioned most of the work we are doing. And uh, I think one of the challenges for, uh, for us in the ETL basically is uh, uh, to run query longer with all the failures and uh, to uh, basically the memory boundary. And uh, another thing actually challenging for uh, Pinterest is uh, once open the floodgate, basically, uh, the resource management is also something we need to kind of worry about. Okay, cool. Um, one question just came in, and that's a good question. Int interesting, actually. Um, I'm wondering how you're going to answer that because, um, and it is about, are you using any caching? So I know that Presto has caching now or based on Rubik's from Cubo uh, in Presto SQL, but that's in the latest releases. So it's like 3.38 onwards or something like that. It's really stable. So 3.40 definitely has that very nicely. But are you doing any caching of Hive objects? Um, actually, that uh, from a Pinterest use case, uh, mostly today actually is most uh, ad hoc. And uh, even for a scheduled job, the most cases will be daily jobs. So caching actually don't help much in our case. Uh, so we didn't put uh, too much uh, investigation on that. Uh, another actually interesting uh, work, uh, workload actually uh, rises is basically uh, like for them, uh, Druid connectors. So on those uh, really repeat uh, high, uh, uh, basically low latency uh, queries. Uh, there's uh, we are kind of in, uh, uh, investing, uh, uh, invest some time into adding cache trips and uh, uh, more uh, localized to get uh, schedule over there. Okay, cool. Well, we're always interested in more work on all the various connectors. There's constantly new ones coming in and improvements for, for the existing ones. We're working on query push down and for aggregate functions and all sorts of things. So I'm sure the Druid connector, as all the other connectors, always have are happy to get some love and more more features added. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it, Mandy. Thank you everyone again for joining us. Please make sure you do check out the recording and join us for the future training classes next week about security with Dane and then also uh, performance tuning with Dane. And who knows, we might have lots more events coming soon, but I'm not going to spill the beans. <laughs> Thanks, me and Brett. <laughs>